Dangers in video games are usually of the obvious and visible variety. Roaming monsters, spike pits and drops into the abyss are just a few of the many perils that could claim the life of your gaming avatar. Sometimes though, the enemy is more insidious, an invisible foe that infects rather than attacks, a pox, a plague or a disease. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the most unpleasant lurgies in gaming, discussing their symptoms and investigating their origins. As we're in the world of video games, these afflictions tend to be more mystical or speculative in nature compared to real world inspirations. So prepare to hear about all manner of unpleasant effects that'll have you reaching for the medicine bottle quicker than you can say, achoo. If you're feeling a bit under the weather, have recently come out in blotches or hives, or have developed a mysterious lingering cough, walk away now. This video definitely won't help your state of mind. I'm the slightly sniffly Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 nastiest diseases in video games. Number 10. The Rat Plague Dishonored an animal commonly associated with pestilence is the rat. While fans will argue that they are misunderstood and, when domesticated, make excellent pets, those with a fleeting knowledge of history will know that these fairy fellows may have real life previous when it comes to spreading the odd infection or two. Arcane Studios' Dishonored series takes inspiration from this with its appropriately named Rat Plague. This nasty malady originated in the city of Dunwall's impoverished districts, and is spread by rats who can transmit it with a bite. Anyone unlucky enough to get a nip on the leg whilst out and about in Dunwall would be advised to get their affairs in order, because the rat plague does not mess around. Victims become pale and sallow, before losing lung and brain function, turning them into shriveled coughing shells. Late stage sufferers will also exhibit something called subconjunctival hemorrhaging, bleeding from the the eyes. These wandering wretches are known ominously as weepers. The worst thing about the Rat Plague is that it was deliberately introduced into Dunwall by Royal Spymaster Hiram Burrows, in an attempt to kill off the poor and destitute, but the plan backfired when it quickly spread to the rich and poor alike. That's one thing about viruses, they're not too concerned about money, status or power. Number 9. The Taint – Dragon Age to understand the taint from the Dragon Age series, first we have to understand the Darkspawn. The franchise's main antagonists are a variety of unholy creatures who kill and corrupt anything they find. This corruption is known as the taint, and it can infect anything, from flora and fauna to the humanoid races of Thedas, up to and including the dragon-like old gods. In fact, it's when the taint gets hold of one of these old gods that the world of Dragon Age really has problems. You see, an old god infected with the taint turns into an archdemon, and these archdemons led the Darkspawn in an attack on the surface world known as the Blight. Honestly, between all the Taint and the Blight, those Darkspawn fellows are quite an unhealthy bunch to be around. The Taint's effect on those who aren't old gods are as varied as they are dire. Plant life is poisoned and killed, odd growths and fleshy sacs start appearing everywhere, and the local wildlife, as well as infected elves, dwarves and humans, can look forward to corruption and an untimely death. The taint is also what connects the Darkspawn to their insidious masters, so infected might even hear the voices of the old gods. You know, if they're feeling particularly chatty that day. Number 8. The Scarlet Rot – Elden Ring the Scarlet Rot from Elden Ring is the most recent pox on our list to have infected the video gaming world. Bringing many unpleasant side effects with it, the Scarlet Rot deforms the bodies and dulls the wits of those who've become infected, leading to madness and erratic behaviour, and causing them to suffer from terrible nightmares. Players can find the fungal growths and red tinted pools linked to the Scarlet Rot throughout the game, and these areas can infect the player character, causing their precious HP to tick inexorably away. Resourceful players, however, can use the Scarlet Rot to their advantage, turning its effect on their enemies. It takes some effort, but finding and equipping an armour that grants immunity, and using weapons and incantations that inflict the rot upon your foes, can turn your Elden Ring protagonist into some kind of frighteningly effective plague warrior, contaminating all they encounter with the vile wasting sickness. The patient zero for Scarlet Rot appears to be the demigod Melania, who is fought in two forms, a cool and intimidating warrior, and then a goddess of rot. This second form blankets the battlefield with rot spreading flowers and attacks of rot inflicting combos, but somehow she is still a fan favourite character. Number 7. The Ancient Sickness – Hollow Knight Diseases don't just afflict humans and animals, you know. Our next affliction is bad news for bugs, too. 
The first sign of the ancient sickness from Hollow Knight was when denizens of the Hollow Nest started dreaming about the entity known as the Radiance, causing its carriers to regress into a savage state and eventually deforming their bodies. The infection is no joke and can even reanimate its deceased victims. The Pale King of Hollow Nest tries to combat the infection by siring a Hollow Knight, who would seal the malady inside itself indefinitely. However, the Hollow Knight was impure and the infection returned, devastating the Hollow Nest and its insectoid population. The cause of this ancient sickness is revealed to be the aforementioned Radiance, a higher being who was once worshipped but was eventually forgotten in favour of the Pale King. Turns out, deity level creatures of light don't like being replaced. One last factoid about the ancient sickness, according to journal entries and dialogue witness throughout the game, the infection smells and tastes invitingly sweet. I mean, that probably isn't much comfort when your mind and body are being systematically destroyed by a hideous plague, but at least it's something, eh? Number 6. The Genophage – Mass Effect if a virus like the Genophage existed in the real world, we'd call it man-made. Because it exists in the sci-fi setting of Bioware's Mass Effect series, however, we have to refer to it as Solarian Made instead. Developed by the amphibian-like Solarians and implemented by the bird-like Turians, the Genophage affected the warlike reptilian Krogan race by causing infertility. This effectively doomed their species, resulting in a long, slow galactic demise, as only a tiny percentage of Krogan females were able to reproduce. Even this wasn't good news, as the Krogan's belligerent nature and tendency to fight amongst themselves resulted in the pursuit of fertile females leading to yet more disaster. Understandably upset with the state of affairs, the remaining Krogan Krogan became even more dangerous and unstable, thus living up to the reputation that caused the other races to create the Genophage in the first place, a tragic and inevitable spiral. Luckily, in Mass Effect 3, Commander Shepard can choose to reverse the virus. This will, however, cause the untimely demise of fan-favourite Solarian squadmate Morden. One Morden or billions of potential future Rexes. Just one of the many impossible choices in the Mass Effect trilogy. Number 5. The Kara Virus – Subnautica In terms of the sheer number of lives claimed, the Kara Virus from Subnautica might be number one. Though the grand majority of its work was done long before the start of the game, the effects of this virus can still be seen, and worryingly, it's still dormant on the planet 4546b, ready to infect and spread once again. As is revealed by various discoveries, the Kara virus, which has already killed billions throughout the galaxy, was brought to the planet by an ancient alien race known as the Architects in order to research a cure. The virus got out and the planet was forcibly quarantined, with the architects creating a gigantic structure that would shoot down any vessel that came near, just for extra security. After being shot down, it's up to the game's protagonists to figure out what's going on and eventually complete the work of the ancients finding a cure. He'd better hurry too, as he unavoidably becomes infected, the disease manifesting itself as nasty blotches on his exposed skin. It's an interesting thought, but in a game made famous by the colossal predators that lurk in its depths, it's the microscopic enemy that's the deadliest of them all. And there's definitely a lesson to be learned there. Bigger is better, that's what I always say. Number 4. Guilt – Trauma Center in the ideal future presented by the Trauma series, most diseases that were previously thought incurable have become almost extinct due to a worldwide medical organization's stride in combating them. Sounds great, right? Well, a new type of infection has appeared on the scene, and it's known as GILT. The term GILT is an abbreviation of gangliated eutophin immunolatency toxin, which sounds very complicated and medical. If someone like Dr. Howe strung those words together, I'd not bat an eyelid, assuming it was some real-world medical jargon I didn't understand. But GILT is soon revealed to be man-made, and the responsible party is a medical terrorist cell known as Delphi. Interestingly, GILT comes in strains that are named after the Greek words for the weekdays, and there really is a strain for every day of the week too. From Sunday, or Kyriaki, that causes lacerations on an organ, to Saturday, or Savato, that creates an energy sapping web around the heart. I know medical professionals don't get that much time off, but a new, progressively more complicated and aggressive disease every day is a bit ridiculous. It's convenient that the thing is called guilt, because those Delphi creeps should definitely feel bad. Number 3. The Plague of Undeath Warcraft 3 
During Arthas' campaign in the celebrated RTS and World of Warcraft predecessor, Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos, you'll find yourself investigating a plague that has befallen the villages and hamlets of Lordaeron. Nefarious Lich King and Demon sympathizer Ner'zhul propagated the plague by recruiting an insidious cult to infect grain and then have it shipped off to all corners of the kingdom. In a world of dwarfs, goblins and multiple species of elves, the plague of undeath was intended to specifically work on humans, as well as tainting their lands and making their villages look all dark and spooky. Those humans unlucky enough to meet their demise at the hands of this insidious disease are merely lying dormant in their graves, certain to rise again and follow the will of the Lich King. However, even after being risen by the plague and joining the Lich King's army of zombies, ghouls and skeletons, all is seemingly not lost. A portion of the undead population managed to break through of the Lich King's control and form a new faction called the Forsaken, who are playable in World of Warcraft. Most of them aren't too happy about being walking cadavers, but at least they got their free will back. Swings and roundabouts, I guess. Number 2. The Crimson Curse – Darkest Dungeon Earlier, we spoke about the Scarlet Rot, but if that particular shade of red is a bit bright for you, then how about trying on the Crimson Curse for size? Dark fantasy roguelike Darkest Dungeon is exactly the sort of game you might expect to see some unpleasant maladies in. If the murky ambiance and bleak medieval vibe aren't enough to clue you in, then maybe the guys with the plague masks might be. The Crimson Curse was first introduced in the Crimson Court DLC, and like its scarlet cousin from Elden Ring, it can actually be beneficial. First off, it cures all diseases an afflicted character had when they caught it, and makes them immune to catching any other diseases too. Secondly, if treated correctly, it can make your character quite a bit more effective in battle. You see, the Crimson Curse causes victims to crave a random loot drop known as the blood. When first contracted, the curse is in its passive state, which causes a few minor debuffs, but if left uncured, it will develop to a craving state. If your character consumes the blood while in this state, they will enter bloodlust state, which gives them huge bonuses to damage, speed and resistance. Turns out being a gore-crazed lunatic infected with a vampiric plague has its upsides after all. And number 1, The Scourge of the Beast, Bloodborne. Considering the name of the game relates to viruses that are carried by the blood, it's no surprise that Bloodborne has an unpleasant affliction up its ragged, pox-ridden sleeve. Appropriately, Bloodborne Scourge of the Beast disease is actually Bloodborne, which will become clear as we delve fully into the affliction's origins. First though, let's find out what it does, shall we? As its name applies, the Scourge of the Beast causes its victims to transform into werewolf-like creatures known as Scourge Beasts, former humans who've succumbed to the plague and fallen into a mindless, murderous rage. The only cure for this appears to be a good, old-fashioned axe to the head, so preventative measures seem to be the best bet for surviving this particular malady. As alluded to earlier, the cause of the plague is blood, specifically the Healing Church's blood ministration process, meaning that the faction who were supposed to be combating the Scourge are actually the ones that caused it. Healing Church? More like the Hurting Church? Oh, and if these standard Scourge Beasts aren't gruesome enough for you, there's an even more hideous variant to be found in the Unseen Village. Turning into a distorted amalgamation of pallid flesh and exposed bone has got to rank pretty highly on the unpleasant symptoms scale. Right, after all that, I need to go and have a lie down. I suddenly feel a bit feverish. 